sand fluffers. That's, that's the project for the day. Seems as though this has become more of a daily vlog than it has just a one I want to put out a video for you guys because I got nothing else. I got no place else to be other than here. Anyway, um, Sunday morning. I've already been out here and done a little quick project at a, at a viewer's request. But anyway, I'd made mention previously, I think, that I was blaming old Foundry Man for his idea for a sand fluffer. And I've got my, I've been casting parts for the um, sand molar that I'm going to build, the Steve, St Steve Chastain style sand molar. So every time I've been casting, usually I've tried to throw in one of the patterns, one of the smaller patterns that I've already got, um, got the pattern for and need multiples of. I cast a, a, a gearbox cap the other day when I was casting. So that pile keeps kind of growing, but in the meantime I think we are going to go ahead and build a sand fluffer. Now the challenge here is going to be if I can do it primarily out of crap that I got laying in my in my scrap pile, in my metal, you know, in my metal rack, and um, just stuff that I've accumulated. So I made mention earlier that I had a half horse motor that I thought was a little underpowered. Well, we've got two or three motors kicking around and the one I was actually looking for, I, I didn't find, and I may have to go to that. I've got a horse or a horse and a half that I think would work well. But, in the interim, we have this. And what this is, is a horse and a half. I believe this came off of a grizzly belt sander. One of the big stationary open-ended sanders. So, it's a horse and a half, good motor friend of mine gave it to me when he scrapped out his grizzly the gearbox went bad and rather than letting me play with it why well, he scrapped it out but I did manage to get the motor out of it the downside to this motor is it is a 3460 rpm and to me that's an awful lot of mass spinning out there but by the same token I don't use 3460 motors hardly at all don't have a of any other real need for this motor so I think we're gonna hook it up and see if it works and if it throws pieces all over the place from spinning so fast we may have to do something else. We may have to to gear it down. We may have to, I don't know what we may have to do. On the other hand, it may work really, really well. You know, throwing a little bit of, throwing a cup full of sand into something that's spinning at 3400 RPM should fluff it pretty well. So, anyway, a good good motor. I see no problem with it. It's got a bracket on it that, that mounted that will actually make a really good mounting bracket. So, I'm going to build this basically after Old Foundry Man's design. Now the motor, like I say, at some point I may have to change the gearing on it. May have to, you know, add a add a belt reduction to it. Um, may have to change it out. It may not be appropriate at all. But with the mounting on it, why we'll build it as a plate on top. And if we have to swap out another motor, we'll either put out a, put a end mount motor on there. Or we'll we'll modify the design. So not a not a uh, issue from that standpoint. Now I think I'm going to run bearings on the shaft rather than bushings. There again, go into my scrap pile. I've got a couple of 5 8 bore bearings there, or I've got uh, a couple of brand new roller bearings. So, not sure which ones I'm going to use yet. I'll figure that out as we go along. As you've seen me, I kind of engineer on the fly sometimes, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to use this for hub. This is just a piece of unknown metal that at some point in time got Tried to be turned down for something, but it's about the right length and uh, about the right size. Actually, it's a little bit oversized. It could be a little bit smaller. Probably wouldn't hurt a thing, but came out of the scrap pile. We're going to utilize it. Use up some of the, the scrap I've got. Side rails. I've got a couple of pieces of 3 16 by, I think, 1 inch aluminum that are going to be long enough. We'll cut them for side rails for whatever we need to do. And then as we need crossbars or... Um, supports in there for one thing or another why we've got some rectangular tubing and some square tubing out there there again we'll utilize what we've got and see if we can't make it at the at the end of the day we'll have to buy a few things for it i don't believe i've got any rubber belting around here to act as a shroud down below for um for the chute that goes around the outside and probably the protector for the for the coupling that we build for at the motor end here i've got some pvc about six and a quarter inch id and i've got more pieces than this. I've got pretty much a full length of this. Fairly heavy wall, about looks like about quarter inch wall on it. 
we're going to use this for housing on the outside and then to feed it in we're going to notch it and take another longer piece then we'll probably thermal form it a little bit and give us a little bit of a feed feed shoot type of thing off of one side we'll cut out part of the part of this on the sides form it to the outside of whatever's an upright have them join there something like that so that they all match up and there's no gaps in there like we've got here and uh, so we'll have one side that we've got kind of a chute we can feed into. I think that'll be a, be a little bit of an improvement. And then for the collar that goes around the outside that will hold the stationary rods going in, why, rather than I've got some, I've got some plate aluminum around here that I could utilize, but we'll utilize a casting. So here I have a pattern that I built several years ago. I believe this went on a, um, well, I know it was, it was designed for Sheldon. I had a... Uh, gentleman that I knew quite well that had a Sheldon lay or not a Sheldon excuse me a South Bend and he needed a uh, steady rest for it so one of the things that I built for him was a was a steady rest off of this casting and it's got a little bit of a warp to it I thought about hacking it up at one time or another but when I take this when I take this pattern for the collar around the outside it's just about the right fit for on there so we'll I'm going to leave the pattern as it is. At some point I may want to cast it. It was showing a little bit of warpage, but it's it's actually minimal, so I could utilize this pattern. But what I'll do is we'll use these as the clamping brackets on both sides to mount it to our angle iron. We'll bolt it up some way there. We'll smooth up this casting so that we don't have the, the extra stuff sticking out here that we don't need. We'll cast one of those up, and it looks to me like this would make a real good handle to move it around with. So, you know, with a little bit of more machining on there and a little bit of contouring and stuff so we'll uh, we'll cast up one of these and then we can run our rods through at the appropriate points on the outside and lock them in so anyway utilizing crap we've got so anyway there's a pattern that we haven't cast for years that so we'll cast one up and utilize that so that's the basic plan you know it'll develop as we go along and uh, we'll see what we come up with but that's gonna be the project so I think I'm gonna go ahead and scrounge up a little more scrap from around here and decide what we're going to do probably for bearing housings i don't know if i will i'll probably just machine something out of out of solid material whether it's aluminum whether it's steel whatever the case may be um we're going to want to maintain those bearings in alignment and um, we'll just continue to go through our scrap pile and uh, this will be the this will be the junk project so anyway a little bit of an overview. Let me know what you think. Give me ideas, and uh, we'll go from there. We built us a couple little mounts for our angle iron for this motor. Took some three-inch angle we had, three-inch by quarter, I think it is, and uh, just cut it to a three-inch length, and then we drilled it to mount on the mount that we've got and rounded the edges. Then we went ahead and welded it to our uprights. We've got a left and a right, of course, and they um, pretty well match the contours on our motor. Not a very good view here but anyway they'll bolt up just like that and what I'll do is I'll come off the other side of that with another smaller piece of angle and just build me a frame up above to hang it from so from there and I offset these we're gonna take some inch and a half angle and it will go across here is where we've uh, got it set you know if we bolt it to this face here why it will um, give us our mounting positions for everything else across the way it goes like this I guess and then that brings the center of the angle that brings the center of the angle onto our center line here and we'll probably have to open those bolt holes up a little bit to um, adjust alignment between our bearings and our um, our little spinning mass of bolts there to align with our shaft on our motor but anyway, bolt up right there, angle iron goes across here, puts us in alignment, and we'll uh, cut it to whatever length we need when we get that far. So that's about all the progress we're going to see on metalworking today, just because it's so uh, almost lunchtime, and I'm going to goof off the rest of the day, I think. I do have a couple of pieces of PVC pipe that I've, uh, I've got the one that I had out here before. It's going to be the main upright. It's in my little Cerakote oven heating up now so I can form it. I'm going to flare the top of that just a little bit um, with this piece. And this piece is what we're going to run out on the front. I've gone ahead and split it. And I uh, just ran it to the table saw, cut it about straight, 
and uh, we're going to heat it up in the Cerakote oven after we get the other one out and formed, and then we'll start forming it to the outside. So that's where we're at. All right, I've got PVC coming back out of the uh, oven over here, so hopefully you can get some sort of a view, although I'm going to be more concerned with just getting it formed. Okay, if I can just hold it here until, until it cools down a little bit more, why the uh, sheet will be pretty well formed on it. Hopefully not too far out of shape. Maybe. And what I'm going to do is we're going to fix the bottom, we'll mark it. We're going to trim out the inside on this pipe so it matches where it meets up down there. And we're going to trim this upper to where it makes a nice little chute, not too high above this part. Okay, we just marked top and bottom, we're above our scribe line there, I'm just going to trim it off there in the bandsaw and uh, get it a little bit closer than what it is. We're going to slowly work it down until we get it to uh, what we think is the right contour. side contour that we'll trim a little above that and work it down the same way once we get this all trimmed. Alright, well I'm about to quit for the day. Here's my hopper. Still got to be contoured down in through the bottom and matched up and then we'll have to affix it. I'll probably run some bolts from the inside where I've got screws right now. Still got to be smoothed out a little bit. I'll have to blend the, the ramp down in the bottom. But anyway, this will sit out in front, so we'll at least have a little bit bigger area to feed sand into it. I, uh, I may go back and heat it a little bit and try and spread it. I'd like it to be a little wider and maybe in closer, but um, for what we're doing with it, why? I think it'll work fine. We'll try her out and see. So hopefully you found something at least mildly interesting there. And uh, if you did, stay tuned. We'll come up with something else tomorrow, probably. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch. You guys stay safe.